Okay, let's try this again here. So welcome to Bible and Brew. I am your host, Katie. You can follow me at Culture Katie. Pretty much any platform. Give my chance for my viewers to come in. This is uh, take two, actually, because I screwed it up. Okay, there we go. Hey, Sonny, sorry about that. I actually screwed it up. I forgot to put that today is the fourth cup. So this is uh, Bible and Brew fourth cup. This is a special edition as I'm coming live from the school that I teach at. Hey, Sonny. Uh, so I'm just going to give everybody a couple of minutes to join us before we jump in or dive into the scriptures today. Um, I kind of wrote all of the contact information behind me, and for my replay view viewers, you can also screenshot at the very beginning of the broadcast. Um, I hope I'm loud enough, Sonny, you can tell me if I'm not. I don't want to, like, holler. I do have students in the room. Um, I kind of ask them for quiet um, to uh, respect that I'm doing this right now. So uh, I hope you have your brew. I have a different, okay good, I'm glad it's perfect. I kind of have a different cup this morning since it's not my own. Kind of just uh, grab some brew from upstairs. Um, it's going to be a full day here at the high school, so uh, let's start it off with some scripture. And actually I um, started this morning, I started this morning uh, listening to the scriptures live, or not live, but listening to the scriptures on the way, my way here as a way to prepare for today. Um, just kind of give me a heads up and um, my blog that I typically do weekdays, um, I forgot about it yesterday, got a little busy, um, our softball game got canceled, so um, it is now up, so I do apologize for not having that for you. Let's see, I just get a little minute here and then we're just going to jump right in to today's scriptures, which is still Acts, the, uh, the book of Acts and the Gospel of John my notes over here in front of me so I can say a little bit better. Today is going to be um, similar to yesterday's broadcast. Um, as the days go on, I'm trying to figure out the best way to go about this, um, kind of creating my own rules for my channel as we go on for this series. So um, what I ask is to um, write down your questions on the side, you know, grab your your notebooks and kind of just jot down your questions as we go along and I'll open it up for discussion and questions towards the end of the broadcast and for my replay viewers um, feel free to follow me um, on my Twitter channel or Instagram or wherever uh, at Holsher Katie um, and put your comments and questions there and I will do my best to make sure that I'm going back and responding to them so uh, so this is Bible and Brew this is fourth cup I'm getting a lot of smiles and weird looks from my class, so kind of keeping an eye on them. So anyway, let's go ahead and get started. Um, in yesterday's uh, readings, um, we picked up with Stephen, who was being, um, I guess, threatened isn't quite the right word I want, but um, Stephen was faced by the people in the scribes in the Sanhedrin who did not agree with um, him teaching, proclaiming the word of Christ. And so they apprehended him and they took him before the Sanhedrin. And um, the reading kind of just dropped off with describing his, hey, uh, Gilead Gardeners, thanks for joining. And um, the readings yesterday just kind of dropped off at... Um, Everyone in the Sanhedrin was looking at Stephen's face, and he had an angelic face. They say um, that his ace looked like his face, not ace, his face looked like that of an angel, and that's kind of where we dropped off. So in today's um, reading, um, we pick back up with Stephen, and the header um, right out of the Bible is basically like the martyr Stephen or something like that, like martyrs in the title. 
And that's because he is actually murdered for his faith. Like, he's actually stoned to death. So let's kind of, let's talk about that a little bit. So we know um, that the people and the elders and scribes, um, you know, oppose his beliefs. They don't agree with Stephen talking about the Holy Spirit. So um, they have him arrested that that happened yesterday they had him apprehended uh, arrested yesterday and they bring him before the sanhedrin and of course um like we're accustomed to in these um biblical times um those who didn't agree who wanted to save their own butts um you know came up with false accusations and um came up with things that weren't necessarily true about Stephen, and um, they don't necessarily note what these things are in the scriptures, but um, it just talks about how, you know, they made fac false accusations. And so um, the Sanhedrin basically um, chooses to just have him kicked out of the city. And um, then uh, the people start to stoning him to death. And um, it's not the first time that we read about um, somebody being martyred for the faith, but um, this um, particular passage is quite interesting because Stephen, um, it's said in, in the scriptures that Stephen actually looks up to heaven and he sees, um, he sees the gates of heaven opening. Um, this is um, in Acts uh, chapter 7 verse 56 if you want to go and reference that. Um, and, of course, um, this corresponds, the, the gates of heaven opening, Stephen looking up and seeing this, is corresponding to the prophecy that Je from Jesus. Um, if we go back and look at the Gospel of Mark, and uh, Jesus says, you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of the power and coming with the clouds of heaven. So Jesus' prophecy has been fulfilled by this very fact that Stephen looks up in heaven and he sees Jesus at the right hand. So um, that was um, powerful. And to think that, uh, you know, it, it's interesting how in the scriptures everything ties in. Everything comes back around, you know, full circle. These um, prophecies, um, you know, whether they be um, Jesus, you know, something that Jesus has said is going to happen. Or um, we look at a gospel passage, and it refers back to the Old Testament. And um, we see that same thing happening in today's gospel. In the Gospel of John, um, yesterday, it started off as the bread, bread of life discourse, and it just picks up from there in today's reading. Um, and we know that um, the bread of life is a symbol of God's revelation in Jesus. Um, we know that this is a Eucharistic theme. And um, actually, Jesus says, let's see if I can find it here in my notes. Um, Jesus makes mention that um, that the, the Eucharistic bread, and he doesn't say Eucharistic bread, but the bread will come from heaven, from his heavenly Father, not from Moses, as it was um, assumed from the Old Testament. And that's linking back to Exodus, um, as well as Psalms and uh, Second Mac Maccabees, all talks about the manna. Um, and so that whole um, idea of how everything is tied to everything in the scriptures. You know, Jesus comes in the New Testament to fulfill everything from the Old Testament, right? So, um, so in the Bread of Life discourse, um, we we are becoming to know uh, or learn um, along with the people that um, Jesus is the Son of Man and he has come um, on behalf of his Heavenly Father, you know, to, to do God's will. And um, by his sacrifice of his own body, we can receive everlasting life. Um, so there really is a healing power in the, in the Eucharist. Um, so um, obviously we're in the beginning chapters of John, so um, except for those that have studied the scriptures before, um, but if, uh, we might not know, but you know, if we were, if we set ourselves in this time, 
in this biblical time, we wouldn't know what was going on. We wouldn't know that um, Jesus was going to be condemned to death and crucified. Um, we would be put ourselves, you know, right there in with the people and taking everything as it came, or you know, as it comes, and um, imagine what that would be like. You know, here's this man, and you're one of his disciples, so you've been following him, you know, for the last three years. Well, this is early on in his ministry, so, you know, you've been following him for a while. And uh, yet again, another upheaval, um, another upheaval, you know, another group of people that that is in disbelief. And here's this man, uh, Jesus, that is claiming to have been sent by the Heavenly Father. So, guys, you need to lose your phones and find something academic to work on. Now. Or I, I'll apprehend them. Sorry about that. So, the life of a teacher. Hashtag that. Teacher's life. So, you know, put yourselves in these guys' shoes, and all of a sudden, there's this man who claims to be the prophecy, um, and um, he is claiming that the Son of Man will be, uh, you know, or um, the Son of Man, you know, will or the, the God our Father will um, send the Son of Man to save, to save everyone, to be the actual bread of life, right? And uh, Jesus has already previously uh, shown us in other ways, in other miraculous ways, um, of how he's going about this. We had the... of the 5,000 with the two fish and the five loaves of bread and in the previous scriptures um, so so that so that's what Jesus is that's that's what's going on in today's scripture um, now for those of us that celebrate the Eucharist um, on Sunday uh, particularly in the mass you know Jesus comes to us fully with his humanity and div div divinity in a way that we can hold him and touch him. He comes in that form of the Eucharist that we see the host or we see the bread, but we know that once um, the priest says um, particular prayer prayers that Jesus is transformed or that host is transformed into the body and blood of Jesus. And in that way, then we can consume Jesus into our physical beings. We can be united with him and consumed by him. And he lives in us and of course, you know, becomes his and become life or his life. And uh, and, and this is very, um, this is a very complex um, matter and it's, it's a matter of faith um, to, to believe that. And of course, um, one of the biggest reasons why so many of the churches have broken off is because they didn't they didn't believe in this matter or the other. Um, you know, you're not going to go into it, but you look back at the Reformation. You know, Martin Luther with the uh, theses, you know, and uh, of how that just started the whole Reformation and the breaking up of the different um, churches because they wanted to be nitpicky and not believe this but follow that and so on and so on um, but we believe in the true presence of Jesus in the Eucharist and when we receive Jesus we can fully um, he comes to us fully in that form and we can hold him and touch him and have a relationship with him and he is in us and that's something special so um, it's it's interesting, though, you know, I, I go back to that idea of how we're early on in the scriptures, we're early on in the gospel, and if we put ourselves 
in the, uh, the apostles and disciples' shoes that, you know, we essentially, you know, our own kind, our own people, uh, had Jesus' fate in our hands. Um, you know, Jesus didn't have to be crucified, necessarily. I mean, he did, but he didn't. You know, that was um, work done by our very people, our, our humankind did that. Um, so I'm not exactly sure. Um, I haven't come up with really a meditation for today yet, you know, something to really sink our te you know, your teeth into, but I would definitely be open to um, anyone's thoughts on that. Um, open this up to uh, discussion and comments or questions. Um, and then of course for replay viewers, um, you can comment onto this video um, on any of the social media platforms that I'm on. Um, so when you replay the video, you can uh, take a screenshot of um, my handle or see my handle over my shoulder here um, and follow and comment because I'd, I'd love to see your comments and questions and do the best that I can to answer them. So let's go ahead and open this up to any comments or questions. Um, You know, what's, what's striking you today about the readings or, um, you know, particularly about the Eucharist or, you know, um, anything really. If there's anything that anyone wants to say. So. Say it now or forever. Hold your peace. No, I'm just kidding. Mm. And I, I find that the scriptures lately have been kind of difficult to really grab a hold of or really um, point out something that that really grabs me. You know, yesterday as I was able to reflect and, and write a blog about the scriptures and it was a little easier, but um, today's I'm not so sure what I'm going to do with the blog. So, yeah, I'm, I'm compelled to um, think back to the uh, using the old language of how we as Catholics used to say it uh, during during the time of the Eucharistic prayer, you know, Lord, I'm not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. Um, that's the old form. And uh, now we say something like, Lord, I'm not worthy to receive you, um, you know, but enter under my roof, something like that, like out of context, out of place. I, I can't just wing it. Um, but I was kind of drawn to that. Um, so maybe our meditation today can just uh, be about, you know, yeah, we're not worthy, but yet we are, because without Jesus, who would we be, and what would we be? So I think that might be, I'm going to write that down, something to that effect, you know, without Jesus, who would we be, who wouldn't we be? Without Jesus, who, who would we be without Jesus? And uh, what kind of, I wrote that down, and, and what kind of world will we be living in, you know, um, that Jesus was in, wouldn't have come to save us from original sin. We wouldn't have gotten the everlasting life. We wouldn't have the opportunity for everlasting life.
and maybe we would have there would have been another way but you know in this context so who would we be without Jesus and although uh, we think that we're not worthy we are so I think that's the meditation for today so I think I'm going to uh, cut this today's Bible and brew off today's Bible and brew fourth cup off there We are not worth. We are not worthy, but we are. So who would we be without Jesus? Sounds good. So take care, everybody. I'll see you tomorrow for Bible and Brew.